Hello everyone, welcome back to Rushmo 3D, I'm James. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Big Tree Tech TFT50. So this is a 5 inch touchscreen that we're going to be using in our Voron Trident build um, and it's going to allow us to use Clipper Screen. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look what's in the box, have a look at how I'm going to mount the screen to our Voron. Uh, and then also how we wire this into our printer so that we can actually use it. So let's start off by having a look what's in the box. Okay, so let's start off by having a look at what's actually included with the TFT50 screen. So obviously Big Tree Tech always provide their stuff in a really nice um, box. So let's get this open and have a look what's inside. So of course we obviously get our obligatory ducky, which doesn't seem to want to squeak at the moment, but I'm sure we can get that into life. Uh, we get a little bag with um, some standoffs, um, some screws, and then this small ribbon cable. So the idea is actually um, to mount your Raspberry Pi to the back of the screen. So we won't be doing that with our Trident build, so we will have to source a different cable, um, which I have already done. So we get a little bag of hardware, and then we get the screen itself. So the screen is in an anti-static bag um, with sort of two pieces of foam either side of it, sandwiching it, um, and then the, the screen itself. So let me put it this way around so you can actually see and read it. So there's not really a lot to talk about on the back of the screen. We have, so I should point out, this is the version 2.1. Um, and that's important and I'll come back to that later. But basically the 2.1 version, um, instead of having a wheel up here, we now have um, three buttons. Uh, two of these buttons are for changing the brightness um, up and down. And then the third middle button is to rotate the, the actual image on the display. So we don't have to do anything in software. We can literally just press the button and it will rotate it. Uh, we have a reset button. And then this header here, I believe, is to do any sort of programming that we need to do, whether that's um, updating firmware or something like that. And then really the only important connector for us is this display connector. So this is a DSI ribbon cable connector um, and that's what we'll be using. So as I say, the idea or the proposal from Big Tree Tech is that we attach a Raspberry Pi to the back. Um, but like I say, we won't be doing that. We'll be using um, a longer screen and then in putting it in our on build so yeah so a lot a lot in the box um, so let's have a look at what we're gonna actually mount this in then put that into our boron okay so as you can see here I've got um, took the parts away that we're not going to be needing and I've brought into the camera view the mount that we're going to be using for our boron trident so this is the part that's going to actually fit onto the front of the Voron Trident. This goes in replace of um, the normal screen mount. Um, and there'll be links to all the files that are, I'm using here in the description. Uh, and then this is the bezel, I suppose, if you want to call it that, that will actually go that the screen mounts in, which then attaches to this part of the mount give us about a 45 degree viewing angle. So earlier I pointed out that this was version 2.1 of the screen. Uh, and the reason I did that is because unfortunately the documentation is not that great for this version. If you were to go to the Big Tree Tech GitHub page, you would find all the information you need about the version 2.0 which is the one that has the wheel to change the brightness. This one has the buttons, but there's no information about that. So the fact that these um, 
parts exist is down to a big part by the community who have purchased the screen and then basically done the work to produce uh, a mount. So with that said, let's actually get this screen mounted in the, into the part. So this part has four heat set inserts, which I've already put in. And then I've just gone ahead and started putting the screws in so that they're in the right places. So the important thing here is that we need to get um, the screen, the right orientation. So the, the screen will go into the mount like this. But then we also need to get the cable into the case and the right way around. So if we see here that this display has to go this way around and when we turn it it's actually going to be the wrong way around so what we'll do is we'll poke that through the case and then we can get that installed so what we have to make sure here is that the uh, little connector or the the little lever for this connector is up and then when when that is up the the cable will actually fit into the connector fine and then we need to make sure that that lever lays flat which then means that we can gently pull the cable through while getting the screen itself into the case this can be a little bit fiddly because we've got to obviously make sure that the buttons get in and that the screen itself fits in. So it can be a little bit of a squeeze but just going gently and then we can get everything to sort of pop into place. Okay, so there you can see that I've now um, mounted the screen into the bezel. Uh, we've got the ribbon cable coming out of the, the side of the case. So it's not actually, uh, it's coming out effectively the bottom of the case. So the next thing we need to do now is mount this part of the screen to the uh, mount that's going to go onto the printer. So if we just put that cable through there and then this mounts this way around. So what we're going to need here is some M3 and you might not be able to see those on camera but those are M3 by 6 um, screws. So if we carefully um, position those into the case see that they will screw into the heat press inserts that we I put in previously uh, this is a little bit fiddly to do on camera but I just get this one in and then I will do the rest So this is effectively how the screen will mount. So I'll just finish off putting those screws in and then we'll mount it to the printer. Okay, so what we want to do here now is actually mount the um, piece that will go on to the front of the printer to the two um, rolling nuts that are under this piece of extrusion here. So to do that, we're gonna use some um, M3 by 8 uh, and I've got one in the skirt already and I'm just going to get the Allen key started into the head of the bolt so that I can then look up from below find where that roll in nut is and then start screwing it in um, and then before I get that too far in I'll grab the next one and then going up from the bottom of the printer, find that hole, and then we can start 
going through into the next um, teen up. And then it's basically just a matter of tightening those two screws up. This can be a little bit awkward. You could um, put the printer on its back if you wanted to. But as you can see, that's now fitted. And what we'll do is we'll just carefully um, grab that ribbon cable, take it into the electronics bay, and then I'll show you how we connect that up to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so as you can see now, you're now looking at the Raspberry Pi that is inside the printer. So what we need to now do is get this ribbon cable that we have connected to our screen um, routed appropriately around these cables. Um, and I think I'll go under the power in for the Pi. And then this has to go with the um, contacts facing basically towards the USB ports. And you have the same sort of situation as we did on the um, screen itself. We have this connector here, and let me just zoom in a bit for you. Uh, this connector has uh, a, con a lever that pulls up. Once we've got that cable in, we push those two side levers down, and that is locked in. So this is now basically all the connections we need to do for the Raspberry Pi and the screen itself. Um, and now what we can do, so you can see basically how much length we've had to use here to get to the Raspberry Pi. Um, now that we've got that in place, we can power on and see if Clipper Screen works. Okay, so what I've now done is basically um, plugged in the printer to the mains power. Um, now I've already installed the Clipper firmware onto this printer. So I've already installed Clipper screen. So if you want a video where I show you how to do that process, uh, leave a comment in the comments below and I'll try and work on that. But this is just a video to show you the screen. So with a bit of luck, when we now power on this printer, the process will go through loading up Clipper, um, and hopefully, once we've gone through our setup, we will launch into Clipper screen, and we can actually use this to control our printer. So it takes a couple of seconds to obviously boot into Clipper, um, start all the services that we need to start. But with a bit of luck, so there, as you can see, we have now um, successfully loaded into Clipper, uh, and clipper screen has started so that basically now means that we can use this um, screen to do whatever we want to do on the the printer itself we've got um, functions for clipper screen itself um, and obviously we can have a look at some system info this is just going to basically give us updates on what version of clipper we've got installed um, yeah so as you can see this works really well so obviously let's take off the screen protector so you can have a a better look at what the actual screen looks like and it looks really nice it's a really crisp screen um, the colors are really nice um, and it was a really simple thing to install it didn't take a lot of programming or um, we didn't have to do any soldering or anything like that. It just worked Okay, so there we are that is how to install the big tree tech TFT 50 onto a Voron Trident now the screen can go in many different printers um, You just have to find the correct mount for it. Like I said the the files for the mounts that I've used will be in the description 
um, I was really impressed with how easy it was to actually install. It was literally one cable um, into the screen, into the Raspberry Pi. Um, and as I said, I already had Clipper and Clipper screen installed. But if you want me to do a video on that, if you just leave a comment down below and I can show you how I go about installing Clipper onto a new build. Um, and that will include how to include how to install Clipper screen. So yeah, thanks for watching the video. Um, there'll be a link to the screen down below as well. So if you're interested in picking one up, you can click on that link. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, and until next time, keep on printing.